Hello and welcome all to my capstone presentation of Hobbies, a nonprofit art community center. Before I get into my project, let me introduce myself. I am Stephanie Ose, senior here at Mount Mary University. I have been studying interior design for the last four years, as well as minoring in studio art. I have always had an interest in art and how I can use it to make a positive change in the world. Yet I also lean towards art that is more concrete than others and no other way to express that motive other than through interior design. So for those who are wondering what exactly is a capstone, a capstone project is another term for a senior thesis. Here in the interior design department at Mount Mary, it requires us as students to use everything we have learned from our previous years and design a solution to a social justice problem of our choosing. This led me to address mental health and mental illnesses upon young adults. The reason why I wanted to address mental health and mental illnesses is because as a young adult myself, I have gone through many episodes of depression, anxiety, and stress throughout my time in college and adapting to adult life. As many others, I always don't feel comfortable seeking help from a professional, a family member, or a friend without the thought on how I may be viewed by having this quote-unquote issue. This leads, in, this leads me into my project proposal. Mental health is a principal component of wellness, self-esteem, resilience, and the ability to cope with adversity influence on how people feel about themselves and whether they choose lifestyles and behaviors that promotes or jeopardize their health. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, 26.2% of Americans between the ages of 18 and older are affected by mental health, and out of this percentage, 6% suffer from a serious mental illness. Mental illnesses refer to all mental health disorders and problems. Many college students and young adults struggle with a mental health illness such as depression, which is the number one killer of suicide. So to avoid a long-term solution to short-term problems, I looked at art as a positive coping mechanism, a healing form, and to create a sense of community for those who feel like they are alone. This led me to create the solution for a nonprofit, our community center an environment that will let young adults have a positive outlet for self-expression and resources on the journey to heal without judgment from society. As I was researching, I aimed my focus on depression, anxiety, and suicide. Depression affects about 8.7% of the U.S. population and the ages of people between 18 and 59 are more likely to experience depression. With that, about 6.7% of Americans experience at least one major depressive episode in their lives between the ages of 18 and older. For anxiety, 19.2 million American adults suffer from specific phobias and anxiety, which is about 6% of the U.S. population as well. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, 18.1% of adults in the U.S have an anxiety disorder. There are so many types of depression and anxiety disorders that can simply last for a short phase, such as seasonal affective depression, to being extremely severe, such as panic disorders and major depression disorder, which is also known as clinical depression. Without a way to carefully address or medicate these illnesses, people look to suicide as the only solution to take away the pain. Suicide is the third leading cause of death among people between the ages of 15 to 24 in America and is more prevalent in females and young adults of 18 to 29. Although art therapy alone will not stop the increasing curve of suicidal deaths, it will be a good start for those who are willing to find a better way to cope with their mental health and drive them to seek help so that they can live longer lives. What is art therapy? Art therapy is a therapeutic technique rooted in the idea that creative expression can foster healing and mental well-being. It is usually partnered with cognitive behavioral therapy. The goal of it is to help people explore self-expression and gain new coping skills. It can help one's self-discovery, self-esteem, emotional release, and stress relief. A few common techniques used in art therapy sessions include drawing, painting, coloring, sculpting, and collaging. These techniques will be the primary classes done in the community center. 
It is utilized in adults who are experiencing severe stress, mental health problems, and children or adults who have experienced traumatic events and many others. A few conditions that can be treated but not completely cured are anxiety, depression, stress, medical conditions, and more. Now that we have gotten some background on the problem addressed, let's get into the solution I have designed. Welcome to Hobbies. Who is Hobbies designed for? The primary users are young adults, as addressed earlier in the presentation, specifically those who are between the ages of 18 and 25. These end users can be female and male adults who are in college full or, par full or part time or not in college at all. The center isn't specifically aimed towards people who are dealing with a mental health illness, but towards any young adult who is open to learn a new hobby. This way, the community center is a judgment free environment. Other users will be using this space will be volunteers, a few being our educators, and full-time staff such as the committee board, art therapists, and receptionists, both intergenerational and female or male. Hobbies is located on the second level of the Children's Learning Center on 2025 East Newport Avenue in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A few reasons why I chose this location is one, I am not from Wisconsin, so I wanted to keep it in the state that I'm currently attending, so that way I can research the best location to fit the demographics needed. The building is located on the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee campus, which fits the age group I am aiming for since many adults between 18 to 25 are attending college. After interviewing many young adults within this age range, a very important aspect that was needed for them to desire to go to this center was available parking and city transportation, which there is plenty of on the campus. I also required access to many windows for having any connection with nature if it's done through having access to direct sunlight or visual access to nature helps improve wellness on your mind and body. This is called biophilic design, bringing the outdoors in. The building used for my floor plan is Northwest C, seen on the parking map. To enter the building, since it is connected to building B and D, you will be using the parking ramp, ramp from the Northwest parking lot, which will lead you into the shared corridor where you take the elevator up to the second floor. Not the entire floor of the second level will be used in this project since it is double the space needed. Here are some design concepts I was thinking of when working on the design development of the center. A few of the words that came into my mind when I was thinking of the environment were engaging, optimistic, calming, welcoming, and creative. I want the center to be a place where people felt welcome and positive every time they entered the place. It is an art center, so I want to make sure that each classroom and space invoke the idea of creativity, as well as give the users a sense of relief through calming colors. I also want them to be engaged in what they're creating, if that is working on a piece alone or as a community. Creating art together as a community can bring so much joy into your life, even if it is in just one moment of time. I want to be able to create a space where people can be a community, relax, forget about their worries, and just have fun. This leads me into my branding concept. After talking to Emily Nolan, who runs her own community-based art therapy practice called Bloom, and is also the chairperson of art therapy department of Mount Mary, one advice that I made sure to take from her was the importance of branding. She told me I should use colors I intend to use in my spaces to be also a part of my logo. This led me to choose the colors yellow and blue. Some emotions that the color yellow relates to are positivity, happiness, and creativity, and for blue, wellness and calm. As mentioned before, I want to create these emotions in the center, so you will be seeing different tones of these two colors as my main color palette throughout the project. Going back to some of the things art therapy helps one person with, such as self-discovery, self-esteem, emotional release, and stress relief, I wanted to be able to incorporate these aspects into the center, and since there will be five classrooms in the project scope, I thought it would be a smart way to identify classrooms by giving them names. Discovery, esteem, 
release, release, and fulfill. This way, users can identify which classroom is which when they are in the center, as well as make the positive connection of what they can benefit from art. And to add some contrast there, there will be use of red tone woods and cabinetry and casework within the space. Here's the finished floor plan. As mentioned, you will enter through the shared corridor between the building and take the main elevator to the second floor. Right from the elevator, there will be a directory to help new guests find hobbies located on the wall across. The main entrance will be through these doors here, leading you into the reception on the left. All interior elevators located on this level can only be accessed to the users who work in the building through a key card. The main spaces that will be focused on for this presentation will be the reception, cafe, gallery, the collaborative lounge, art therapy offices, the classrooms, and the community lounge. Throughout the center, there will be lockers for all users to place storage in. Each locker can be accessed through creating a temporary pin for the day or until end of use. All floor and material in the center is either carpet tile or luxury vinyl tile to help absorb sound and can be easily maintained while cleaning. Below, we have a section cut view of the center to show you the length of the building. Welcome to the reception. For the reception, I wanted to make sure new users knew that they were in the right location and felt a warm welcome when they walk in. Here's where users can request a tour of the center, request to plan gallery viewing events, and learn, and learn more information. Going back to bringing the outdoors in, I used wood panels on the wall behind the desk, as well as placed some plants. I also brought in the use of hexagons and fabric on the lounge chairs, as well as the flooring to resemble the pattern of a beehive. Since the use of paint, wallpaper, panels, and logo are the main excitement of the space, I went with neutral fabrics and finishes for the furniture in the space to ground everything together. Moving on to the cafe, I designed the cafe to be a quick touchdown area for guests and staff to conversate, relax, or to enjoy their meal. It includes a small kitchenette that is open to anyone to use, a refrigerator, vending machine, and bar seating. Repeating the biophilic design, hexagon ceiling clouds are installed, as well as hexagon backsplash across the counter, and the cafe also includes includes a living plant wall, which can be seen through this drawing below. On the plant wall, there is a crumpled up wallpaper to, sh to showcase that even thrown out items can be used to create art. And here is another render image of the cafe space. In the gallery, guests are able to donate the work to the center for them to showcase the work and auction off to an audience. This way, the center can use the profit they make to pay bills, buy supplies, and stay running. The gallery also includes movable interior walls besides the center wall due to the column placed in the gallery. This way, the center can rearrange how they would like viewers to navigate through the gallery. Featured in the space is artwork from Ashley Young, an art therapy senior here at Mount Mary, to demonstrate the use of the classes available at the center. Luxury vinyl flooring is also placed in the gallery to help with easy cleanup and absorb sound. It also indicates as a rectangular wayfinding device so that way viewers walk through the entire space. A few ottomans are placed for those who need to take a seat when viewing art and the gallery can also be used to hold exhibitions for local artists in the area. One of the lounges in the center is the collaborative lounge right outside the gallery. It serves as a space for the guests and staff to collaborate the next layout for the gallery. It will also be served as a reception area whenever the center hosts their monthly gallery auctions. 
In the space, it includes laminate tables on caster wheels and stackable counter height chairs. That way, it is easy to move furniture arrangement as well as to store any furniture if necessary. Wall-mounted tack, marker, and cork boards are placed against the gallery wall to help planning with the next layout. Right around the corner, there are a few lounge chairs with private privacy screenings for any individual to use. Within the lounge space, there are wood panel ceilings and a linear chandelier to repeat the pattern of the horizontal lines through the furniture arrangement and the flooring in the space. Here is another rendered image of the collaborative lounge. As seen, you can see more details on the ceiling as well as the mount wall mounted materials with the cork marker and tack boards. Towards the back, there is a wallpaper. This is to represent the possibility of guests and other young adults and staff to come together to create murals throughout the center on blank corridor walls. In the center, there are four art therapy offices. The offices are all designed to create a calm and conversational setting between the therapist and client. The color theme around each room were pulled from elements of the, a beach since most people think of the beach and water as calming. Here students are able to talk to a therapist or learn more about art therapy and its benefits. Therapists are able to take walk-ins or schedule appointments to all young adults in the center. A couch is added in each room to allow clients who have the option to choose to be more comfortable when discussing with the therapist. There is also a table dedicated for the therapist to help clients express themselves through art together. Moving into the classrooms, as I said before, there are five classrooms. Each one specifically dedicated to crafting, drawing, painting, or sculpting, all broken down to either art room or ceramics room. In each art room, there are adjustable height stools with the vine vinyl fabric once again. There are also movable open carts. This way, supplies can be moved throughout the space and shared among more than one person. This is, this is especially great for the paint room. That way people aren't knocking over paint or needing to move far to get extra supplies. Since all classrooms will store different wet mediums, the flooring once again is luxury vinyl tile to make cleanup quicker and easy to maintain. All art room interior walls are painted yellow to, to help promote a positive and creative environment. Each classroom is located by exterior windows to help promote wellness as each person is creating. And in this specific side, you can see this classroom is dedicated to painting, where you can see the easels, the movable open storage cart, and as well as the adjustable stools. Here are one of the two ceramic rooms. In the ceramic rooms, there are pottery wheels for throwing sessions and a work table to sculpt. Clay must have moisture to be able to sculpt, so the tables will be covered with canvas to help keep the moisture in when sculpting on the table. Cubbies and wall-mounted shelvings are available for guests to store the work they will continue. Both rooms share a kiln and storage room and are supplied with a slab roller and a pug meal to reuse old clay. Sculpting the clay can be frustrating for a few beginners, so the walls are painted a grayish blue once again to help give a calming environment. The last space that I'll be showing is the community lounge. The community lounge is located on the west end of the floor plan near the exterior windows. The lounge is meant as another transitional space between class and therapy sessions for guests to use. The setup of the lounge is to help create conversation among other peers and to have another workspace outside the classrooms to create individually. Additional art supplies can be stored in the bookcase and storage credenzas located in the space. Continuing the theme of biophilia, this lounge has the most access to direct natural light, as well as viewing of plant life within the planters in the space. 
Soft blues and blonde woods are once again used to help create that calm aesthetic. Abstract art is shown within the furniture, flooring, and artwork to continue the theme of creativity in the space. Here is another rendered image showing the entire lounge space. Here you can see the work tables towards the back as well as how the sectional conversation space is set up. I hope you all enjoyed my presentation on hobbies. Thank you for taking your time to listen about the importance of mental health and mental illnesses among the young adult community and how art can help create a better mindset for those who are suffering. I hope this presentation gave you some inspiration into looking at art therapy as a new way to help cope with your own mental problems and to help you understand that you're not going through this alone. If you claim yourself artistic or not, art is there to help you express, discover, release, and be relieved from all the things that are weighing your mind and well-being down during hard times. I hope the idea of hobbies gives you all who are suffering with a mental illness to look into the idea of going into a art community center and to hopefully open your minds to find resources on ways to heal from mental illness. I would like to give a special thank you to Emily Nolan, John Michelli, and Teresa Olson. Thank you all for being wonderful mentors and advising me into the right direction for this project. I would also like to thank Ashley Ong for letting me showcase her work in the gallery of this project. Thank you to all the participants who filled out my questionnaire to help me design this project for you. I hope I have achieved all your needs and desires. Finally, thank you to all my wonderful teachers and advisors in the department. I could have not have done this or the last four years without you all. Please take some time and view the last four slides on your own. There are digital boards that summarize the project into a shorter scope. Take care and I hope you all start another hobby soon.